he does, right, Ronnie? Huh? That's what she does, right? My YouTube peoples. Hey, I'm still a little high from this weekend. Now, not high as in emotional high, like on an emotional high, not that kind of high, not what y'all y'all thinking. But anyway, let me get this out because we know it's proven that a lot of y'all don't watch the whole video. It is proven by my last video when I started the video off saying that I was retiring that y'all didn't listen look at the whole video because I had people at the racetrack this past weekend going, yo, I can't believe, are you really retiring? Man, don't retire, man. Yo, man, you got, you got me all up. People, watch the whole video. <laughs> it was a promo on the race against Spencer at the XDA final. So anyway, let me get this out there now because we know that some people still ain't gonna watch the whole video. I won the 2023 XDA Real Street National Championship. I'm the champ. All right, so we got that out. So in case y'all click over to something else, y'all already know that. But for those of you who stick around and watch my videos, um, I got a treat for you. Here we go. Ricky Gatson looking for his first one. Mark Hill looking for his third. You know, like, I got a, I've been getting a bunch of phone calls and a bunch of inboxes and text messages congratulating me. And I got to tell you, it feels really surreal. It feels good um, to bring home this championship. I don't know why. I, this is my 13th championship. I don't know why this one feels so rewarding um, or, or why it even feels different, but it does. And I think my, it might be because I'm not the spring chicken I used to be. We all know that because half of you out there making jokes about it. But, uh, you know, it, it gets harder as you get older. It gets harder to stay focused. It gets harder to ride with the competition, especially when a lot of them you train. Like, so they know your secrets. They know your ins and outs, how you ride, how you tell them to ride. So, but it feels really good to be able to get out there and I'm at least, wow, there's only a couple guys in the class that that might be close to my age. And I'm sure I am the oldest in the class, but we race against a bunch of people who are half our age. So, um, anyway, I got a call from Richard yesterday and uh, my nephew told me how proud he was of me. And that, that makes me feel really good, like coming from Richard. And he said that the vintage RG showed up this weekend. Now, we all know he used the words vintage because I've been doing this for so long and Richard's been out there with me over the last 20 years. Um, Richard, as a matter of fact, been racing longer than that now. So he's been out there with me all that time and he's watched me handle pressure. And as a matter of fact, I always looked at it like pressure don't affect me like it affects most people when, it's, when you're on a racetrack. And I believe it's because, not because, maybe it's because of my confidence in myself and how much I've won over the years. But I don't know if it's necessarily that because when I was younger, when I was in my 20s, and I was out here racing Dave Schultz and John Myers and Terry Vance and Pizza John and, and Bob Malloy and Bobby Spina and all these greats in the motorcycle world. like. I did not I did not fear them. And I was in my early 20s. I didn't I didn't fear them because I always had the perception that my perception was that it didn't matter. If I lost, it didn't matter because I was supposed to lose. There was, to me, you think it would be a lot of pressure racing day shows or, 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 or Terry Vance. But in my eyes, it wasn't when I was younger because I wasn't supposed to beat those guys anyway. So I had nothing to lose in everything to gain. So just imagine if I lose, I knew Pizza was going to beat him. I knew, you know, I knew Bobby was going to beat him. But if I win, uh, who is this kid? Who is this kid coming along? And that's exactly how I made a name in drag racing. When I came along, nobody knew who I was. Like, like people in Philly did, the local people did, street racing people did. 
But the pros didn't know who I was. I was just a black kid from Southwest Philadelphia that, and, and had money behind me and thought that, hey, this kid got money behind him. So that's why he's out here. Until I proved myself. Now, I've been in a situation where the, what I did this weekend is not far off from what I did when I first started my career. Take a look. Ricky Gadsden running in the FX Alcohol Turbo category. Basically the same type deal as Dwight Selden. They run them alcohol as a turbocharged motor. Ricky with a smaller displacement engine in that Suzuki, 1260cc. But it makes a lot of horsepower, about 500 or so. So let's see what happens here. Can the world champs strap a whole shot on Dwight Selden and put him out in round number one? These guys have had some great battles over the course of the last 12 to 15 months, and this is another one being staged right here at IRP this weekend. That was vintage Ricky Gadsden. Remember, I went from street racing straight to pro bikes, and, and I still rode street bikes. So there were weekends. I remember Chicago, somewhere around 99. There were weekends, 98. 98. Because I signed with Kawasaki in 98. So 97, 98. There were weekends that I rode five motorcycles. Friday morning, eight o'clock in the morning, and they say the weather's gonna be fine. There's only a 17% chance of rain today, but we'll see what it looks like. But anyway, about to get set up today. I'm excited. Today is Friday. Today is the day. September 29th, XDA, about nine o'clock tonight during first round of qualifying. We going for the points lead and the win from Virginia. Stay tuned. We went testing. And and look at look at my bike leave in this test video. Watch this. We went testing a week before the race and look at this video. That's right, Spencer. We at the track getting ready for your ass. You see you see Jim Kelly over there and you saw that run. You better be scared. You better be real scared. So in the, in the meantime, it was coming down to the finals of the, of the XDA Virginia bike bash. Because me and Spencer Clankham had 
got into the final, so we were to meet. So we decided to run the race during qualifying at the last race of the year, which was the XDA finals. Getting ready for first round of qualifying tonight. Testing the day. It's coming up soon. So, friendly little rivalry between me and Spencer and Ben Knight and Dustin Lee and all turned into a little bit of cheese being exchanged. So I made that video, you know the one. later and make our shakedown but we're gonna watch what they doing especially spencer all right bud what's your prediction for today me and spencer oh, we'll be close. all right george what's your prediction today me and spencer okay, man you're the more consistent rider i think so. super duper dave what's up man all right what's your pre what's your prediction for today me and me and we going all the way we're going to That's enough. Yeah, we'll see. That's a long bit, Jay. Y'all, now y'all know. Now, you know what? I just thought about something. There was a lot of happy people that, that, that thought I was serious. You know, matter of fact, Spencer Claycomb, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare quit before I get to that ass. You gotta have heroes. You gotta have people that you follow, people that you, you rock with. You know, you need to have characters in, in drag racing. You know, just like in any other class. You got a good guy, you got a bad guy, you got a funny guy, you got, you know, a guy who, you know, who's too serious, whatever. But you gotta have somebody that you cheer, because then, then you get fans to the racetrack cheering you on. So anyway, got to the race, thought we was ready, and god damn, I don't know what the hell happened. We had so much stuff going on. Check it out.
Friday night. Now next round, so we haven't been able to get the race off yet today because the weather, we have only gotten two runs all day. Not because they're rain, but just because it's been oil downs and it's been real cloudy and misty every now and then. So uh, Spencer decided to wait till tomorrow, which, I, which is a good decision to wait till tomorrow for us two to run. to still gray skies but no threat of rain on the radar like well actually yesterday there was no threat either but we got some so today the problem with today is the DA the density altitude is 400 feet which is some weather we've never raced in which is weather so good that it's going to create a problem because these bikes make more horsepower, the better the oxygen in the air is. The better the density altitude is, the more horsepower it makes. Which means you have to manage that horsepower, which could be a problem for me or the rest of the guys. So it's gonna be interesting to see who makes the right tuning decision on a day like today. So stand by, first round of uh, qualifying is coming up today. second round at the five o'clock session. So this will be my first full pass down the racetrack. Stand by. Ricky Gadsden and David Stewart. Numbers three and four in the points changer, separated by nine points coming in. Now Ricky Gadsden is one half of that final that will be run between he and Spencer Clay on the race First round of qualifying is over. We ended up qualifying number four with a 58. Um, but it was a 58 where I was off the throttle because it was going to the, to the wall and Spencer went a 63. So it's about that time y'all. Next round, second round of qualifying here at XDA will be the, the run for the money for the championship lead points, points lead. And uh, wish me luck y'all. There go his cheer, there go his cheering crew. There go his cheering crew. I hope y'all got enough. Y'all got your money? What? Amex after Amex. Oh, <laughs> we don't take credit cards. We don't take credit cards. This is cash only. He got Amex. I'm gonna have to charge you a credit card fee. Three more percent. Spencer and Nick get this tune up together. It's about to be a good one. All hoodies are now sold out. Time to do it. Time to go up for 
We're the first pair out, so time to go on up and do this. JT, DragBike.com. We the video is up. Spencer, Ricky, y'all went at it. So yeah, it was definitely. So we've been, you know, this and has been this has been a showdown all weekend. He's been sending t-shirts over here to myself. I'll sign this for you later. So I sent him a t-shirt and told him, listen, I want you to wear this t-shirt in my winner's circle picture. Take that, take that ass whooping with this ass whooping. <laughs> But it, it was it was a it wasn't no numbers that we were proud of, but you know, just a drag racing. Somebody blew up in front, well, flipped over in front of us and put stuff on the track. <laughs> and we had to go out there behind that, you know, fresh glue, everything. And the bikes that went in front of us went down pretty good. So I thought we was good, but as soon as I left the starting line and I plugged second gear. It just blew the tire off the rim. So at that point, I thought it was over. <laughs> um, but when I looked over at Spencer, he was having problems of his own in his lane. He up and down and sideways. So uh, it was a showdown, but uh, we pulled it off. And that's 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 
That's what we needed to win Virginia, put us number one in the points. Um, and now we still got the rest of the weekend to go through. These guys out here flying this weekend. We got to get our shit together. But for now, we'll celebrate later on tonight for that race. But then we got to get right back to work tomorrow. All right. He's got a lot of work to do. There's still a lot of racing left this weekend, but there's no way I couldn't get you on camera and let everybody hear it straight from you. Thank you this too. grin on his face hasn't stopped since hey, I got over here. Fucking 1100, 1200 foot. We saw a second sidebar on the left side. Like, we're 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 like,